It has been five days since tornadoes tore through western and central Massachusetts. People there are still trying to figure out what to do now as federal and state disaster teams assess the damage. Tonight, team coverage, meteorologist Ryan Hanrahan live in Brimfield, but we begin with Ben Sasenko live in Springfield with the cleanup there. Ben. We're here on Pennsylvania Avenue in Springfield, and this is the type of damage we've been seeing. This is all that's left of this house, the basement. People are still coming to terms with all of this, and they're still telling their stories about a day they say they'll never forget. It's, I still don't comprehend what happened. You know, I, I haven't slept since then. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot to take in. This is where David Garren's house used to be. Last Wednesday's tornado blew the entire house into his neighbor's yard. One of the few things left is this concrete sink that he crawled under as the tornado changed his life forever. What's next is somebody comes in, cleans all the, cleans all the debris, and you start to rebuild. You know, that's all you can do. It's, it's home. Lola Langone has a similar story. She was on the second floor of the house her husband built 61 years ago. She hid under her bed. Once Lola heard some quiet, she got up, walked to this open space and saw her neighbor, and what did you do, Lola? I just waved to him to show that I was alive. It is a difficult time here in Springfield, but people are chipping in to help. The Western Mass Food Bank and the Springfield Partners gave away food to the victims. All my power's out right now, so I don't got no refrigeration or nothing. So this will help us over, you know, until we get our power back on. Though the cleanup is still in its beginning stages and people are still coming to terms with the magnitude of their losses, Tornado victims here in Springfield cannot say enough about the generosity of their neighbors. And a man drove from South Hadley with a refrigerated truck and gave us ice cream cones, and I said, this is normal. It's a hot day, and we're yeah. eating ice cream. That was one normal thing in our life. Federal and state disaster teams have been in this part of the state assessing damage to see if they'll be eligible for federal aid. For now, though, people here say they're taking it day by day. We're live in Springfield, Massachusetts. Ben Sisenko, NBC Connecticut News. Keisha. Ben, thank you. Farther east from Springfield, the town of Brimfield. Residents there are dealing with significant damage to their homes and businesses as well. NBC Connecticut's Ryan Hanrahan continues our live team coverage from Brimfield. Ryan. Yeah, Keisha, after leaving Springfield, this tornado moved through Wilbraham, moved into Munston, and it reached its strongest level here in Brimfield. We're on Haynes Hill Road, and we're standing next to what used to be a forest. Take a look at the forest. It's gone. Almost every tree is snapped. Many are uprooted. The homes that are here on Haynes Hill Road didn't fare much better. Take a look at this home back here. It was actually picked up off the ground, moved off its foundation, and even the foundation moved as this tornado moved through. Now, back here, Steve, I'm going to have you pan around. Let's take a look at this. This right here is the second floor of what used to be Charlie Smith's mother's home. And though the home is destroyed, they are thankful that so many people have helped them in this time of need. It's been incredible to help. I, I, people from Pennsylvania uh, last night were helping us chip brush. Uh, we had a church from, what was it, Rhode Island. They came by last night, gave us ice, water. Volunteers from as far away as Kentucky converged on Brimfield to lend a hand. Dozens from the Southern Baptist Convention set up a staging area at the Friendship Baptist Church with portable showers and laundry for victims. We've set up our incident command here and we have chainsaw crews that are coming in from around the country to assist uh, people with uh, the debris. The amount of splintered timber in Munson and Brimfield is indescribable. Whole forests are leveled and the houses that used to dot these hillsides are no more. Halfway up this hill, there used to be a house. The house isn't there anymore. It's actually right here at the bottom of the hill here on Hollow Road in Brimfield. You can see right here, it looks like it used to be a teenager's bedroom. Some video games, a DVD player, a computer keyboard, a TV, a mousetrap, all sorts of stuff here. The woman who lived in the house followed the house all the way down the hill. Miraculously, she wasn't injured at all. When that tornado came through, it just engulfed everything. It took out their entire barn where all the horses were. Her parents' farm is gone and the caretakers on the farm lost their apartment. But Robin Burns and Matt McLean are happy to have their lives and their dogs. What else are you going to do? You can't sit and cry. You can't change the fact the building is gone. It's only stuff. Some stuff in Brimfield is lost forever. Other things like this screwdriver are impaled in this tree. The cleanup is only on its fifth day. 
but it's really just beginning. You don't know where to start. There's just so many things that need to be done, so many things that need to be done now. Um, they, they're, the whole idea plan is that they're going to, they're going to get through this, they're going to rebuild, and they're going to start again better than before. Now, many people we spoke with today who lost pretty much everything say their biggest need right now is people with chainsaws because virtually every house here is covered with trees that are split up and they need people to help cut down the trees and remove what's left so they can actually get left, get next to what's left of their house. Several people who lost everything said the outpouring of support has been great. One woman said she has 17 toothbrushes that were donated to her, but right now what her and her husband and her two boys need, they need gift cards to Walmart or Target so they can start buying some clothes and picking up the pieces because right now they have nothing left. We're live in Brimfield, Massachusetts. Ryan Hanrahan, NBC Connecticut News. The tornado's fury from last week on full display here in Brimfield. The two by four stuck in the side of this house above it. Some sticks impaled in the second floor and the attic. I'm Ryan Hanrahan live in Brimfield. Coming up at six, a look at the destruction in town and how you can help folks out across the border in Massachusetts. Also, it's live from the NBC Connecticut Media Center. This is NBC Connecticut News. Hi, everybody. I'm Terry Brooks. I'm Lisa Carberg. The buzz of chainsaws can be heard from Westfield to Southbridge as the cleanup continues from last Wednesday's deadly tornadoes in western Massachusetts. Take a look at this video you probably haven't seen yet. It shows the tornado hitting the south end of Union Street in Springfield. A surveillance camera at a car wash captured the twister as it moved into the south end. State and federal disaster teams toured the damaged areas today. We have team coverage. Ryan Hanrahan live in Brimfield and Ben Sisenko live in Springfield. We begin with Ben. Ben. The electric company told me just a short time ago that all power has been restored, but some people don't have any place to live. This was a house behind me. People are just beginning to come to terms with all of this. They say this is all a lot to handle. It's, I still don't comprehend what happened, you know. I, I haven't slept since then. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot to take in. This is where David Garren's house used to be. Last Wednesday's tornado blew the entire house into his neighbor's yard. One of the few things left is this concrete sink that he crawled under as the tornado changed his life forever. What's next is somebody comes in, cleans all the, cleans all the debris, and you start to rebuild. You know, that's all you can do. It's, it's home. Lola Langone has a similar story. She was on the second floor of the house her husband built 61 years ago. She hid under her bed. Once Lola heard some quiet, she got up, walked to this open space and saw her neighbor. And what did you do, Lola? I just waved to him to show that I was alive. It is a difficult time here in Springfield, but people are chipping in to help. The Western Mass Food Bank and the Springfield Partners gave away food to the victims. All my power's out right now, so I don't got no refrigeration or nothing. So this will help us over, you know, until we get our power back on. Though the cleanup is still in its beginning stages and people are still coming to terms with the magnitude of their losses, tornado victims here in Springfield cannot say enough about the generosity of their neighbors. And a man drove from South Hadley with a refrigerated truck and gave us ice cream cones, and I said, this is normal. It's a hot day, and yeah. we're eating ice cream. That was one normal thing in our life. We've seen the electric company, we've seen the cable company, we've seen the Red Cross, and we've seen private citizens going door to door offering to help their neighbors. It's really been a team effort here. We're live in Springfield, Massachusetts. Ben Sisenko, NBC Connecticut News. Back to you. Thank you, Ben. And the tornado traveled east to the town of Brimfield, home to about 3,700 people. The tornado missed the elementary school by just a half mile. And tonight, about 150 homes there are uninhabitable. Our team coverage continues now with Ryan Hanrahan, live in Brimfield. Ryan. Yeah, Lisa, we are just off the road from that school. I'm standing in between two houses that were destroyed as this tornado moved through on Wednesday. Take a look at this house here on Haynes Hill Road. That is a two by four that is stuck in the south side of this house. One thing we're hearing over and over again this evening is how much the community has come together to support those who lost pretty much everything. It is absolutely amazing. The, just the community itself has stepped in to help everybody. It's 
it's just unbelievable the outpouring of help and they're coming from everywhere. The tornado destroyed this farm owned by Heather Dickinson's parents. The winds were so strong they stripped the feathers off this chicken's back and backside. And the chickens look pretty funny with all their with feathers missing and they're, they're a little sparse. I don't think they're, they're probably pretty embarrassed to be seen right now. <laughs> the barn on the farm is now a pile of rubble and caretaker Robin Burns emerged from that rubble with her three dogs unscathed. I'm a little jumpy with loud, loud sounds coming up behind me right at the moment. I wasn't scared. I, really? didn't have, I didn't have time to get scared. I didn't have time to panic. I just ran with the dogs. Up the hill, this house is one of a half dozen destroyed. The wind picked the house off its foundation, leaving just the basement and a heap of rubble next to the driveway. 30 volunteers like Aaron McHugh, who just graduated college, are helping out the family who used to live here. Nothing like this ever happens in Massachusetts, so, I mean, just kind of felt bad and felt like we need to help out people. Her boyfriend from Ireland, working for the summer on the Cape, is helping out too. It's pretty devastating. It's pretty unlucky the way some houses got hit while they're across the road. You can see other houses that weren't hit at all. Just up the street on Haynes Hill Road, this greenhouse is one of the casualties. One home nearby still has a roof but was picked up and moved off its foundation while Charlie Smith's mother's house is without a roof. We're going to have to work our way through it and hopefully in a couple years, I guess the only upside, like my mom keeps saying, is, you know, we got this incredible view of the mountains right now. And here is that view live in Brimfield. You can see the next mountain, which is about two miles to the north, which is clear as day. It used to be all forest here. That forest is all gone. One thing that we're hearing from people on Haynes Hill Road that were hit so hard by the storm is their immediate concern. They need people who can operate chainsaws to come up here and help them clear some of the debris and some of the trees that are still littered all around their houses. That's for the next couple days. After that, for the next couple weeks, one of the concerns is trying to get some money to these people before their insurance claims come through, and they're asking you to help out by donating to the American Red Cross to aid in the relief effort. We're live in Brimfield, Massachusetts. I'm Ryan Hanrahan, NBC Connecticut News. Okay.